Hey guys, Sven here from CNS LOL team, and I'm back with another champion guide, this time for cool stuff. Kilsa is a good champion right now because she's very lane dominant. She's super strong in the early game and she can dictate lane face. She's very strong in almost every lane matchup. She is very good in the early game, has a you know strong one item power spike and just overall her, her 1 to 25 minutes power is really high. So if you play Kilsa, you play to win lane, you play to dominate the mid game and then close the game before it hits you know 4 or 5 items. Traitors. So this right here is what my runes look like on Kosta. I go Halo Blades every single game, no matter what these days. It's the best lane rune. You can stack three spheres in like one second, level one, and then press the E to get a good trade level one. Some people like level tempo on Kosta, but I prefer Halo Blades in the version for lane power. So here your options are mostly Taste of Blood versus Sudden Impact. You have a dash on every auto attack on Kosta, so you always have the seven lethality and six magic pen. But the damage it does really isn't that useful. So I go to the bot most games. But if your lane matchup is really easy and you want more damage, you can go Sun Impact. But you will see that in most games, the damage this rune does is very little. So I wouldn't go for it. I go to the bot. Now for the uh, the stacking trees, I guess. I prefer Apple Collection in solo queue because in solo queue there's a lot of kills where you stack this rune quickly. You also have an early game champion. So you will get this stacked up really quickly and get a lot of AD. Tommy Ward is a good rune in competitive play where people have more wards, they use more wards, control wards aren't bought that often in solo queue, so I don't like it as much, so I just go eyeball collection. It's easy to stack and it will give you a lot of free AD. For the bottom three, Ultimate Hunter, because your ult has a very long cooldown, therefore the 5% already is very good, and the 4% stack stacks pretty quickly. Your ult is a very valuable spell, has a very long cooldown, especially rank 1, rank 2, and you can't buy CDR on Kalista, so therefore just go with uh, this one always for the old old cooldown redu reduction. Now secondary on Kilsa you need alacrity. No matter what build you go, you must go alacrity. So now you have one rune left, and I think overheal is the best rune. Also on Kilsa you often buy player ranking into like hurricane or BT, so you'll have a lot of overhealing and shields. So I think it just works well. You don't need mana for person's mind. Triumph is not bad, but I think overheal is better, more value. And these runes on here like Cut Down or this one or Last Stand, they just aren't that good compared to how much value this will give you in a, in a full game. Like I said earlier, uh, AS attack speed is super important, so always take it everywhere you can get it. I like pretty, uh, take it in the small runes down here. It's just much better than having a little bit of AD or CDR, you don't, don't need red. So AS, AD, Armor. If you play against Syndra or Cassio or Vagar or Brand, then go MR, right? Never HP, always armor or MR for more landing power. So yeah, this is my runes for every game I play, and uh, yeah. But just champs with hard CC that you can't dodge are hard to deal with for Kilsa in the early game. Um, Alistar is one of them, you know, the combo is undodgeable by Kilsa, so watch out. And just things that outrange Kalista. Kaelin can be hard sometimes as Kalista, but it's manageable. You are good against champs with skill shots. So Ezreal, for example, or you know champions that have counterplay essentially, because you have your hops, you can dodge all the spells as Kalista. So you want to pick Kalista into champions that have counterplay. <laughs> essentially, don't pick it versus Alistar and Lissandra and Malsahar. But generally, like anything with skill shots, like Morgana, Karma, Soraka. It's very easy to play against, whereas Alistar, Nautilus are hard. Blitz Trick is like a 50 50. Dodge the hook, you win. Get hit by it, you lose. But generally, just uh, skill shots equals good, and no counter play, like Nautilus ult or Alistar combo equals bad. That's a TLDR of this little champion counter guide. You so, when the game starts, you buy your item, Thorns play it most of the time, and then you go to lane, let me speed this up a little bit, and I skill E every game I play, no matter what. Uh, almost always. If you go into a real game, you are here, your support's in a bush, your support's probably here too, and there you see it's somewhere like this, right? You want to hit the wave, like this, on cooldown, jump whenever you uh, right click, and then go in lane. Whenever you get to in range, you do an auto attack like this, jump forward, do one more, and one more. This is your basic level 1 combo. You auto attack once or twice, or maybe two times if you are in range to do it still, and you back off. You press E instantly, 
to do damage with the rend, and then you just back off. That's your level 1 combo or trade pattern. If you can do it, you can attack like this, yoink, 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 and start hitting a minion like this. See the melee here? Use E to reset the, the, the E on the minions, right? This is because when Kelsa kills something with her E, the CD is reset and also refunds mana, as you can see. Uh, if Varen kills at least one target, it's cool and it's reset and refunds 10 mana. So in lane, if you can do this, it's better something like this right here. It's like, what do you want to do? If possible. At level 3, I have Q and E already. And at this point, in some lanes, you can skill W if you want. I think that it's pretty bad, personally. I skill E usually level 2 or Q, depending on matchup. If I play against something that's high range, like Caitlyn or maybe Ash or Varus, I have a Q max, like two points early. If I'm playing against something low range like Lucian or Vayne or Shivana bot in this case, uh, I'll go two points on E. The E increase increases damage, obviously, but also the mana reset. So you can do this more on minions. You can E them, use E, get more mana back. Because having mana refund on her E is what makes it so good, because you can hit the minion like this and then E it. So you don't have to worry about the minion being low or not. You can just hit it whenever you want. So I max E. At level four, I still Q. In lane, your Q poke is like this. You Q a minion. If it kills the minion, it goes through. You hit the Q on them, the minion, and them. It passes through all rent stacks to the minions. I mean, through the minions to the champion. So I just hit a minion twice. You press Q. There's two stacks here. Hit a minion a little bit like this, and you press E. This is a very common poke tactic in lane with the Q max. You Q to a minion. You hit it. Nice. If you don't, that's fine. And then once you hit it, you reset your E on the minions if you can. If not, just press E, it's fine. You can sometimes just press E, I mean Q, and then E right after, that's fine. It's good poke, costs a lot of mana, but just judge your mana pool if it's okay for you. That's your most common lane trading mechanics. It's just to Q minion like this, hopefully hit a champion here, and then press E. And always judge if you can have time to reset your attack on the minions or not, depending on how much range you have. We will so how the passive works is whenever you attack something, a champion or a monster or even a honey fruit, you can jump. A small lunge, they call it. This jump scales with your boots and your attack speed. So if you buy something like, you know, Berserker Greaves, you will jump faster and also further. So the difference is noticeable right here. So this is used in lane to jump back and forth to dodge skill shots or to well this is about who's too good but in lane you can dodge skill shots like astral q karma q whatever or to kite back and forth generally just use it whenever you can so everything all attack you jump right and left and you can dodge hooks or bindings or just small poke like astral q's and whatnot so it's important that you get used to this in a custom game before you play the game because it's kite quite different it takes time to get used to it so don't worry about it Another thing about the jump thing that I was showing you right there, you can jump walls. Um, like this wall, this is jump. You can use this to jump over the wall, or use your Q if you have it, like this. Um, you can jump walls a lot of places um, on Callista. Some there and others, like this one, or here you can jump over. Um, Baron wall is a bit hard to do, but it is possible. There's a spot right here. You can jump the wall. It's hard to complete on your first time. Um, on Dragon Wall, it's down here. Right, this spot, you jump over. So just keep in mind, even the even the gate wall is jumpable. Um, it's something you might wanna, you know, keep in mind if you're in enemy base. Sometimes your own wall, you can jump over as well, but you can also just walk through it. So yeah, the passive is very unique and very important to use correctly. Um, it can save you. You can kite with it. You can go forward with it. You can chase with it sometimes. And then lastly, on your champion, you have a way higher base 80 than most champions do, but your autos deal only 90% of your uh, total attack damage. This was changed a long time ago to nerf Callista, because she was too OP back in the day. But nowadays, it just means that she has a very high AD for her level, um, which means her spells do a lot of damage, which is what makes you mono max the E and the Q early and take W later. So yeah, that's about the passive. Our will is what? So a very common first base on Callista, given how much gold you have, is to buy AS boots, no matter what. This is always fine. And then you walk... Your core build is always going to be boots and Boric. 
The order can depend on game to game, but I like boots first base. It's the best buy for me. It's a lot, lot it's really stat efficient for the gold you buy it for. And the passive tier one boots will give you a short dash increase, and the tier two boots will give you a, a bigger dash increase. Therefore, I love boots first base. After that, I like to buy Bork. Uh, always, it's the most common item on Costa. It's good in lane, it's good early game power spike, it's good for kiting, good for all inning. It's just good in Costa. So, when I buy Bork, I prefer to buy Cutlass first over the bow because life still is really strong and AD is really good, and the active is really strong for all ends. So, you go for Cutlass. In some lanes, you might want to have lifesteal versus like Karma or Ezreal or Brand Support. Just overall champs that poke you a lot, you can go for lifesteal. Or if you're confident in your mechanics, you can go for the boots to just dodge their abilities instead, right? Instead of trying to like, you know, sustain through them, just dodge their abilities, right? If you're confident in your mechanics, which I would be in this case. So, personally, I like boots first, always. And then once you get more gold, let me just get me some gold here. Once you get more gold, you go into the Borg, the player ranking. This is your core every game. You have these items at some point, buy some pink wards, whatever. And then here, often you'll see me in competitive play, I will go for Rage Blade. But for everyone else, I'll recommend just going Ginsu, or sorry, Run Hurricane, not Ginsu's, because Ginsu's is good in competitive play where you can, you know, coordinate, you know, Baron attempts because the Ginsu's is so good at doing Baron. But for everything else, I like Hur Hurricane. It gives high amount of attack speed, it's pretty cheap, gives movement speed, which doesn't really matter too much, but the AoE on the, the bolt is really good. It allows you to kill waves, you know, very quickly, stack spears and everything. Even the small bolts apply spears, so you can kill the whole wave in one second like this, and team fights, you get so much life steal and so much min spear stacks on every minion, that I think Hurricane is just too good and kills that's not buy it every game. This is your core build, every single game. You will always have boots, Dorn's Blade or shield, the Ring King and Hurricane. Then you can go into options like QSS if they have Sandra or TF or Leona or Malsahar, whatever. Hard CC you can't get out of by QSS. If you need MR versus like Evelyn, if they have, you know, Akali or whatever, buy Shrinker. If they have, you know, Talon or Sed or, you know, heavy aid damage like that, you can go for either Aegis into Death Stance or you can go for. Chain vest into GA. But generally, if you don't need any defensive items like GA or Stopwatch or Aegis or QSS, Hex Drinker, you name it, then my next item is to swap BPT. Because lifesteal is so good on Kalosta, you stack it up very quickly in a minion wave, you get a huge shield, and you have like, let's say I'm a level like 15 right now, I have three items, I will have like plus 500 HP shield from BT and my overheal at that, that level, right? So I like PT. After this, it's just more of the same. You buy like these like half tank, half lifestyle items, half, you know, utility items. So I'll go for QSS now, or Hex Drinker, or Aegis, you know, GA, um, depending on what they have in their team. So it really depends on what you're up against right now. If you're playing against, you know, heavy damage, you can go Death Stance because they have like set mid, but they also have you know, a Kali top lane or, you know, cast the jungle, just a lot of damage dealers, then I would go for Death Dance because it has armor and MR, and the uh, active, I mean, the passive works with a little closer because you have life still. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, generally, the games will end before you get to this, uh, this point of the game. Uh, also, one thing I didn't mention enough was Lost of Whisper. Overall, Executions is a really good item in solo queue because a lot of healing nowadays. Soraka or Vladimir or Akali or Conquer champions in general have a lot of healing. So sometimes you consider buying just Executioner Scrolling. It's a really good item overall. Generally, as an ADC, your job is to hit the front line always. Just hit whatever you can hit and kite forward. Sometimes there'll be an angle to like flash forward and get a seek engage, you know, some smurf play. Generally, if you go in, like you go forward with dashes, I would, I would ult to bring a support to you and then he can defend you if they go on you with a knock up, right? So generally just hit the front line and jump either forward if you win the fight or backwards if you want to kite backwards. So this is very simple AC stuff. Isn't that different from most stuff, just hit the closest, highest prior target you can hit. 
and sometimes ult to engage, and sometimes you ult to save your support. That's pretty much it. And you want to use your E either for high damage or to, you know, secure kills on people to get the reset. Okay, so an overall sum summary of Kalista would be to remember to build its blade, AS boots, and hurricane into BT, QSS, Hex Drinker, whatever you need. Uh, you always want to look for early bases for boots or ramp center or whatever is good for your lane. Your strongest with Thrash, with Alistar, with you know strong all in supports that uh, could have fight in the early in the laning phase. You don't play with you know rage supports that want to skill for the game. Swaka kills that isn't really a thing. Um, so I would prefer to play with Thrash or Alistar, I said already, Leona, Nautilus, Blitzcrank, you know. Get in there and fight counter champions. So don't look for Braum or don't look for Soraka or Karma. They have no synergy with Kilsta. Look for like the champions I mentioned earlier. And remember the level one trading pattern of just go forward, hit once, twice, or three times, press E. Or sometimes you can do the auto reset on minions where you can, you know, hit the minions and usually get the clone back. Just judge. Sometimes you use Q, you can hit true champions. Just remember that for every situation, there's three different trade pattern and figure out when to use which trade pattern of auto, then Q, or auto, kill a minion to reset the E, or Q to minions to poke, right? So these are your overall important things. But I think the most important thing is when you play Kalista, play with a duo. Play with someone you know who plays Thrash or Alistar and knows what the old does. A lot of people in solo queue, in low elo especially, don't know what your champ does or what the ult does, so they're very confused. Therefore, if you want to play Kalista, play with a duo. Play with someone who plays the champions that fit your champion and someone you can you can talk to. Being on comps helps a lot too because otherwise people will misuse the ultimate, they will not understand what you want to do, and that can create chaos. Uh, this champ has a low win rate in solo queue a lot of the time because she requires coordination to, coordination to be useful. Therefore, if I play Kalista, I always duo with my support player to get the maximum elo out of my champion.